Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. This video I'm going to be going through osmosis for GCSE Biology. If you are new here then subscribe and check out all my other socials to keep up to date with all the latest biology and revision tips. So let's start by looking at the definition. Osmosis is a type of transport but it is only the movement of water and specifically in the exam you'd need to say it's the diffusion of water. Now if you're not sure what diffusion is, I'll link my video up here that I've already covered on diffusion. The direction that the water moves is from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution and that's what I've demonstrated on this diagram here. The dilute solution, there are lots of water molecules compared to only two solute molecules. In a concentrated solution, you have much fewer water molecules compared to your solute. And that could be dissolved sugar, or it could be dissolved salt, for example. And the water moves through a partially permeable membrane. And that's what this dashed line is representing. And your cells are partially permeable membranes, or the cell membranes are. And what that means is there is this surrounding layer but there's tiny holes which will selectively allow certain molecules to pass across. And in this case, water is able to pass through that membrane. So that's our definition. But you could be asked to describe the effect that osmosis has on plant material. And in this example, I've got potato cubes in three different solutions, which are all of different concentration. And we're going to look at what would happen to the potato in each of them. So the first one, we have put a potato in a concentrated solution. Now what that means is there is a more concentrated solution outside of the potato compared to inside and therefore the water will diffuse out of the potato into the surrounding liquid. So the potato will decrease in mass because it's losing water. The next one that we have is a dilute solution. And this time, that would mean that if we had a really dilute solution, for example, if it was just pure water with nothing else dissolved in it, then the water would move into the potato because inside of the potato, there would be a more concentrated solution. So in that instance, the potato would actually gain mass because water is entering. In our third scenario, we have a solution which is exactly the same concentration as the inside of the cell for whichever solute we've made it up for, whether that's sugar or salts. And if that's the case, there won't be any overall movement or net movement of water because it's already at equilibrium, or in other words, there's the same concentration inside and out. Now, one of the required practicals is linked to that, but I'm not going to go through that in detail, just very briefly to show you um, the data skills linked to this. So we've got our three solutions and we talked about which potatoes would gain mass, which would lose mass. And the one where it was in the same concentrated solution, then that wouldn't gain any mass at all. But if we want to find that out, we have to weigh the potatoes at the start put them in the solutions, then we'd leave them for about 30 minutes so there's time for osmosis to happen, take the potatoes out and we actually have to dry the outsides because we only want to know the mass inside of the potato, not any mass of the water droplets on the outside. So we then tap them dry, don't squeeze them, but just tap them dry and re-weigh them. And here I have some results. And what we can see here is the change in mass at the different concentrations. And this is more than the ones we saw on the diagram before. Now, if there's no change in mass, that means that there wasn't any overall diffusion of water. So osmosis wasn't happening. And if that's the case, we can find out on this graph what the exact concentration of the potato must be because where our line intercepts zero on the y-axis, which I've circled here, that means that there was no change in mass. So no water was moving in or out of the potato. 
And that must be because the solution the potato was in is exactly the same concentration as the potato itself. So in this example, that would mean that the potato's concentration was 40%. Now, we haven't got what the solution itself was, but that is a really common question. So you're looking at where there's zero change in mass. That is what the concentration of your plant material is. Now, it would actually be better to present that as the percentage change in mass. And the reason for that is not all of the potatoes that we were measuring would have been exactly the same mass to begin with. So to make sure it's a fair comparison, we actually need to calculate the percentage change in mass. So this table shows you all the data that was collected, the initial mass of the potato before it went in the solution, the final mass of each potato cube after it had been in the solution, then we've worked out the difference of what the change in mass was and whether it was an increase or negative indicates a decrease. And the last column is the percentage change mass. And this is the formula below for how you would calculate that. So you'd need to do the change in mass divided by the initial mass and then times by 100. And that is one of the math skills that you are expected to know. So you do need to learn that formula. But that is it for osmosis. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up.